Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Star Trek Critic, where you can listen to that armchair commentator that won't stop talking just like those know-it-alls in the row behind you at the movie theater. Today's episode is Requiem for Methuselah, which as far as I'm concerned was a waste of budget. The Enterprise gets a disease, and the only vaccine they can use can be found on the minerals in this one planet claimed to be owned by a really, really old man. This episode takes place about a week after The Way to Eden. Obviously, that poison planet also carries deadly diseases. The first point is lost for the captain and first officer beaming down together during a time when a deadly disease is spreading across the ship. The next point is lost for not bringing a security slash science team to help get the right talent, especially if they only have four hours. And another point is lost for not beaming down in protective suits since they still carry the disease. And this is called Rytalon, not Ritalin. Fox says a human is in the vicinity, but it looks more like an upside-down version of Nomad. Minus one point for a visible wire holding up N4 and his twitchy moves. Lint is like one of those assholes that lives in the desert surrounded by barbed wire and threatening signs. He's scanned the ship and knows why they beam down, but doesn't seem to care. Kirk even offers to pay for it, while McCoy and Spock are secretly thinking, why don't we just use the transporter to beam it all out of the ground and be done with this asshole? Flint threatens to kill the three of them, while Kirk responds by threatening to kill all four of them, just to show who has a bigger penis. While up in space, Scotty is contemplating that if he kills the captain and first officer on the ground, he will be in command of the Enterprise and save the crew, just like they would do in the Mirror Universe. McCoy and Spock appeal to Flint's good side by comparing the Rigelian fever to the bubonic plague. Flint is thinking, the rat, they figured out my secret identity. This might not be the correct year, but Flint is thousands of years old, so he can make a mistake once in a while. And he's like, oh good, you brought Rigelian fever to my planet now. He really doesn't want them there, does he? I love matte paintings, but this one has been used at least twice before, so minus one more point. As Flint escorts them into his house, they think, Hey, how did he get all these props from our previous episodes? Flint admits that he has shields to hide his mountain retreat. I'm sure this guy would love that. M4 is his personal servant, but he still doesn't talk about his mechanical blow-up doll. Flint is so bored, he just buys collectible items off of eBay all day while Reyna just wears expensive dresses around the house and watches reruns of Star Trek. Flint offers them some brandy, and it's Spock who says, hey, that's not a bad idea. McCoy and Kirk discuss how important they get this vaccine on time. They should have beamed down an entire science lab like they did on Mary, and Spock is secretly contemplating stealing some of the art. Reyna is excited that there are other men on the planet. Apparently, she's been really lonely too. Yeah! Flint is pretty old, so he might not be able to satisfy her in that realm, which is why she wants to meet the Vulcan. She wants to discuss subdimensional physics with him. That's what it's called in the 23rd century. And Flint has taught her all he knows in that area, which he shielded her from. I told you he couldn't get it up. Flint says that's brutal. He heard me, didn't he? Flint asks Raina if she's lonely, and she says, that's why I want to meet Spock and cure him of his seven-year itch. Flint's like, wow, you're really lonely, aren't you? Look closely. Spock is drinking brandy. With the tricorder's help, he has discovered these works of art are authentic da Vinci's, but created with modern paint and canvas. McCoy and Kirk take the time to make drunk Vulcan jokes. Kirk takes Spock seriously and decides, maybe we should check up on this guy. This is one of the rare times you see Dr. McCoy with a phaser. Here comes M4 with the right talent. It didn't dig up very much, did it? The tricorder says it is a bag of bones. Flint comes up with a reason for them to stay longer. Now Flint invites them to stay for dinner. Kirk says, we don't have the time. And then he introduces Reyna, and now this is what happens. I could stay a bit longer. Reyna finally gets to meet some men. And these three just forgot they have a ship full of dying crewmen to worry about. Of course, this brings into question, how many more times is Flint going to fib? Spock already has the advantage on who's going to get laid first. So Reyna is pretty darn smart. Poor Reyna has been stuck on this planet a long time. McCoy has the best pickup line, and of course Flint manages to find a reason to get him out of the room. The robot says, thank you. While M4 takes the right talent to be processed, Dr. McCoy checks out the bottles of food coloring used for those paintings Spock is so envious of, thinking maybe this one will taste great after all, since it is green. To attract a robot audience, we have a scene with M4 behind the shower curtain. 
Raina is really good at pool. Kirk and Flint argue about everything, while Raina just wishes she could go to Las Vegas and enter a pool tournament. Does Raina want to teach Kirk about pool, or just wants to get close to a man? Usually it's the other way around. Spock plays the piano, wondering when Kirk will ever realize he's dancing with a robot. Flint poses for the camera to get his good side, thinking, look how well my clothes blend in with the props. Spock is thinking, this is a player piano. Why can't Kirk sit here and let me dance with Raina? McCoy gets the right talent from N4 and wonders which one is salt and which one is pepper. Look closely at the painting because you won't see it again. I hope McCoy was polite in explaining this to M4, since M4 is a rather trigger-happy robot. The answer to this is, we're kind of screwed right now. According to IMDB, this is a Brahms song, but not what Spock was playing, so minus one more point. Spock points out something isn't right about this, so Kirk says he will figure this all out by going to the lab. Secretly, he just wants these bottles full of alcohol so he can get trashed. Minus one point for Captain's Log talking down to the audience, and another point for it taking place only five minutes after his previous report two hours ago. Reyna follows Kirk and repeats a quote Flint said to her a few minutes ago, but it doesn't quite translate right. Kirk uses this opportunity to make his move. Reyna's thinking, thanks, but I'd rather pawn far with Spock. Now he's in trouble with M4, a very jealous robot. Spock saves the day. Of course, Flint has a fleet of spare robots that also hang from fishing lines. Flint is really just a schoolyard bully to Kirk, isn't he? They should have just beamed the minerals out of the ground without his approval. Kirk is getting the hots for Reyna a little too fast, and Spock gives him a logical speech, which translates as, The narrator is right. We should have just drilled the right talent ourselves with a transporter, and not dealt with Flynn and his assholery, and you falling in love with a robot girl in just under two hours, and now I have to straighten all this mess out. Kirk calls Scotty for the COVID update. Scotty says, Nobody really has the flu. It's just the third season budget is cut to the point. Sulu and Chekhov aren't in the show at all. And Uhura doesn't have any speaking part. She's just sitting at the communications console, hacking your Twitter account, and trash-talking you all day. And it turns out there's no record of Flint or Reyna, but it is possible to buy a planet. Spock makes the discovery that Flint is pretty darn old. What they don't understand, the purpose of the delay is so Flint and Reyna can watch Star Trek live. Spock has figured it out, and Flint is like, rat, he figured us out. Flint asks Reyna about her experiences with Kirk. He is weird, isn't he? And now it gets weirder. Is he watching them because he's a perverted voyeur? Or do he and Reyna have a bet going on to see how long it will take Kirk to realize he's playing tonsil hockey with a machine? Uh-oh, why did her eyes pop out like that? And Flint is thinking, I never made her eyes pop out like that. Kirk is in for a big surprise if he pops one of her circuits. Kirk wants to make her an adult. That's a creepy old man line. And either he drank those chemicals off the shelf, or this is a poor script. Because Kirk may be a player, but it does take him a while to actually fall for a girl like he's doing in just this short of a time. So, minus one more point. Ironically, it's the M4 robot that gives away the whole thing by hiding the right talent in the secret room that nobody is supposed to go through. How much do you think this painting would go for at auction now? Spock knows something they don't. He must have read the entire script before them. Shout out to the M4 robots in making the vaccine that will save the crew of the Enterprise. And now the secret is out. I wonder what Kirk is thinking. I can't believe I kissed you. The next point is lost for another captain's log talking down to the audience. Just how many did he create? Yay, he finally figured it out. Hopefully this is the version number and not the age the model is supposed to be, or Flint is a much creepier person than we originally thought. I think I saw this on another movie. Flint admits he was lonely, so he made himself a girl. Spock wants to know if Flint is human or a robot too. McCoy lets Spock know he was born to prevent any future Spock-McCoy bickering. Flint was born in the year 3834 BC. Not BCE, like progressives want you to think. The secret is out. Flint was a bratty soldier who discovered he couldn't die. Then became a very skilled and creative artist, changing his identity on his Facebook profile when it was time to move on. Now he's really boasting in front of the captain, isn't he? The biggest flaw is that some of the people he claims to be had publicly recorded deaths, so minus one point for this plot hole. Just what the heck are they talking about? 
And this comment means he's just admitting that at his age, not everything rises like it used to. Strangely, Spock knew about his anatomical inabilities all along and hoped it wasn't true. Makes you wonder why he was thinking about this at all. Flint is just a strange xenophobic weirdo. And despite Kirk saying, we aren't going to tell anyone you're here just because you are so weird, he gets weirder. And there goes the Enterprise. Did Flint really capture the Enterprise or just block communications and put a model of the ship on the table as a bluff? And all three of them are thinking, oh goody, more product placement for Gene Roddenberry's toy contracts that we don't get residuals on. And he's the one who says we live in a utopian future where money isn't used anymore. Flint says, I make these here and sell them online. That's how I made my money to buy the planet. While Kirk, Spock, and McCoy are saying, you asshole, the show is about us, not the ship. Look closely, a man is standing at navigation while Lieutenant Rada is at the helm. But now, he is sitting at the helm, and the other seat is empty, so minus one point. Now he's quoting Dr. McCoy. He was worse than dead. Kirk tells Flint what his favorite Justin Timberlake movie is. Spock plays the guilt card on Flint. Flint holds the nettles of the present. These are nettles. Makes you wonder what else he likes to sell. That explains why he doesn't want anybody to know about his planet. It is Reyna who tells Flint to put the ship back, so Flint puts it back, secretly believing it would look much better hanging from his Christmas tree. Kirk claims they were intentionally delayed to help Reyna get emotions. And both Spock and McCoy say, don't you take credit for it all, we were here too. Looks like Flint's got a bit of an itch. And now comes the dumb jock fight. And minus one point for Kirk falling in love with a robot in just two hours, just for the plot. Spock tries to stop the fight, since they are supposed to save the Enterprise crew from dying of the plague, not fight with a grumpy old man over a girl who's really just a well-dressed robot. These two never fought over data like that. Oh wait, it looks like they're trying to cover up that they did. Uh-oh, what happened here? And now here, what's she up to? And now Data's dancing with the doctor, and now he's gonna make his move on Tasha's sister. How sick is that? The secret is out. Women love electronic devices. So why do they complain about men and inflatable dolls? Okay, back to the show. Kirk is giving pouty lips. Minus one point for the dumb jock fight. And another point lost for obvious stunt doubles. The fight causes Reyna to gain human consciousness, and she tells the men she can make her own decisions. Of course, Kirk uses this to his own advantage. He's full of shit. He still wants Reyna all to himself. Unfortunately, the influx of emotions and drastic changes in her programming causes her computer to crash. Aww. This type of choice caused Lal to crash 75 years later, too. Is this a science fiction concept that androids are incapable of love and other emotions? Or Gene Roddenberry's misogynistic belief that if you give women the freedom to choose for themselves, it will kill them? We will never know. Spock explains it to Flint and Kirk, then quietly suggests that they take the vaccine back to the ship so no one will die. Oh good, they actually saved this ship in the middle of a three-way love triangle. Kirk acknowledges why Star Trek got cancelled. According to Dr. McCoy, Flint started aging regularly after he left Earth, although he has been on this planet at least 30 years, and several years on at least one other planet so we will never know exactly how fast or slow he ages. And what this really means is that Flint intends to create more Reyna androids for himself. Spock will mourn his death, even though he was kind of an asshole to them all. Oh look, Kirk has a potted plant, just like Data. And another point is lost here, since Captain Kirk had real relationships with real women that died, and two hours with an android would have never done this to him. This also gives McCoy a chance to be a jerk to Spock who also forgot that Spock fell in love a few times as well. Did all of them forget that they're on a plague ship? This is Spock politely saying, Doctor, you're an asshole. And the show ends with Spock making Kirk forget he almost had sex with a pool plane android created by Leonardo da Vinci. McCoy will learn this 20 years later, and it makes him go insane. So, who lived on Holberg 917G? James Daly played Flint and has a long stage and screen career, as well as serving in three branches of the U.S. military. You can see him on The Twilight Zone, Planet of the Apes, and a long run on the TV show Medical Center. His two kids also had successful careers, but a heart attack took him at age 60. Louise Sorrell has nearly 100 screen credits to her name, including Medical Center, The Flying Nun, and The Incredible Hulk. 
She promotes charities for sea lions and abused women and has racked up over 1,500 soap opera episodes on Santa Barbara and Days of Our Lives. And M4 was played by Nomad. Requiem for Methuselah. Is this episode product placement for Christmas ornaments or flat screen TVs? A low budget Trek show that reuses old props and matte paintings, barely shows a ship, and leaves out half the crew? Is it a show about an ancient Earth artist and inventor still alive? Or the curse of androids gaining emotions? A love triangle between two men and a robot? Or a reminder women will die if they have to make their own decisions? None of the above. This show is about the Enterprise crew contracting a deadly disease. And despite being an unnecessary episode, received a score of 84%. That's all for today. Thanks for viewing. Be sure to check out my other videos and playlists, and most important of all, click that like button, the share button, that subscribe button, and I'll see you again soon.